Hello, welcome to a vlog. <laughs> a reading vlog that I'm very excited about. It is the Polathon vlog. It is Polathon week. Polathon has begun and I'm so excited to dive in to some polar fantasy books. I'm really excited. I feel like it's been about a year since I did this last and it has. I've got my Polathon mug out for my tea that's actually empty. I've got my first read ready to go. I'm gonna start off with Cry of the Ice Mark. I've got my next read lined up. I wanna go for The City of Stardust by Georgia Summers. Yeah, I don't actually know if that one's a polar fantasy or not, but I think it might be. It's got like snowy setting on the front, so I think it might be but it works very well for my team prompt as well. Um, and if you're very confused and have no idea what I'm talking about in regards to Polathon, Polathon is a polar fantasy themed readathon that I host in February every year. It is for a charitable cause as well. We donate money to uh, save the polar bears at Polar Bears International. I will leave all the information for it down below. Um, it's a cause that I care for and we've been raising money for for a few years now. So that is what this is all about, and I'm really excited. Um, in previous years, I have daily vlogged Polathon. I'm not doing that this year. I am still working this week, but I'm gonna make a weekly vlog for you instead. But before we get into all that polar fantasy goodness, I'm excited to thank the sponsor of this video, Wild. Wild is a company that I have been using and loving myself for quite a while, and they are on a mission to shake up the throwaway culture of bathroom products with reusable alternatives. They offer deodorants and body washes with reusable cases and compostable refills as well. So no single use plastic in these deodorants. Sustainability and the environment is obviously very important to me and the sustainability of Wilds products is fabulous. The refills are made of compostable bamboo, so with every refill you use you're saving 30 grams of plastic and the case is made of a durable aluminium, so it's built to last you a lifetime. And on top of that, Wild uses natural ingredients and they are certified vegan and cruelty free too, so it's just packed full of goodness. Another part of the Wild mission that I can truly get behind is the fact that with every order placed they plant a tree with their partner on a mission. So every time you buy from Wild you are helping to contribute to a wild forest. <laughs> I made the switch to Wild a while back. Um, my bathroom drawer actually is full of the stuff already. I've been using it for a while. Jake uses it and loves it as well. Um, and this one here is actually the limited edition Valentine's case. And how freaking cute is this? And the refill process is super simple, so you don't need to be intimidated by that. Their new design case actually makes it even easier because it doesn't have the buttons on the side, which is really cool. So super simple to use, smells delicious. This is the limited edition rose petal scent. And I'm not normally a floral girl, but that smells incredible. It feels really good on my skin. I'm a big fan and I'm really excited for them to be sponsoring this video. It seems like a really good fit, don't you think? <laughs> also, side note, you can get it engraved with your name. It's got my name on it. How cool. Anyway, I am happy to let you know that with this sponsorship I can get you a sweet little 20% off if you use the code JDRay. That 20% off is a limited time offer and it is available on all products on their site or your first subscription. Because did I mention they also do a subscription service? The link will be down below or I think there's a QR code that should have popped up on your screen just about here if you wanted to scan that instead to get there. I am super excited to have been able to partner with Wild for this video. Truly a company that I enjoy. So thank you so much to Wild for sponsoring this video. Uh, yeah, check them out down below. So my first read is going to be Cry of the Ice Mark. I am very excited to get on with this one. Um, I hadn't heard anything about this until I put it in my TBR video. And now a bunch of people are telling me that it was one of their favourite books from childhood. So I'm excited, if not maybe now a little bit more nervous to dive into this, but excited to kick off Polathon. Let's go, let's read. <laughs> Hello, it is the evening of day two of Polathon. Um, I don't think I even gave you a reading update yesterday, which is 
bad of me, but I was on sprints with Beth and Steph for most of the night. It was absolute chaos. <laughs> um, so I actually didn't get as much reading done as I wanted to. But as of this very moment in time, I am about halfway, just under halfway, through The Cry of the Ice Mark by Stuart Hill. I am knowing more and more about what this is actually about. I'm on page 226. Um, I do still plan to read some more tonight. I'm getting quite tired. But I think I'm going to take the book to bed with me in a bit. But I am enjoying this so far. I'm liking the... how would I describe it? It's like, it's kind of got those middle grade vibes. I think it might be a middle grade. I'm not entirely sure. Um, it's Chicken House. It probably is a middle grade. But it's got some more adult tones to it in places. Like there's a lot of brutality with the war and the deaths of the people around our main character and so on. Like the politics are quite strong, like it's feeling very political. I'm enjoying that. Um, but I'm also enjoying how <laughs> we have the queendom now of the ice mark and then we've got the wolf folk that are like werewolves. That they're like wolf men. And then there's also the oak oak folk. They're like the trees. Um, and there's like the king of the oaks. And there's the vampire king and queen as well. So it's also got all these like fairy tale-ish vibes. Fa would you call it fairy tale? I don't know. Maybe the oak folk are a bit more fairy tale. Mythological things wolves aren't myth but you know like werewolves vampires paranormal supernatural and so on and there's the land of the ghosts there's a lot more supernatural elements to it than i thought that was going to be haven't come across the talking snow leopards yet looking forward to that um but yeah i'm enjoying it it's feeling like quite a quick read despite the fact that i haven't read a lot that's entirely a me thing but i'm enjoying the story, I'm enjoying the book, I think it's progressing at a really good pace. I'm actually having a really good time with this, I don't know why I sound so surprised, um, but I'm enjoying this a lot. I like the way that the ice and the snow plays such a role in the war as well. Um, I'm having a good time, but yeah, I thought I'd better give you an update because I haven't done that yet. Um, yeah, I'm gonna take this to bed with me, try and read a little bit before I fall asleep, but I am a sleepy bean so I think that's that's where I'm going <laughs> hello it is Wednesday night I have just had a shower and I have finished I can take that out of there now I have finished cry of the ice mark I really enjoyed this I'm way too high for you or are you way too low you're a little bit taller now but I have finished Cry of the Ice Mark. I really enjoyed this. I liked that it was political. I liked the war. I liked the different supernatural characters. I liked our main character and her companions. Um, I had a good time. It felt fast paced. It felt well structured. Like I, I really enjoyed this. I don't think it necessarily made me feel very strongly. Like, maybe my my complaint would be it was very... I want to say factual, but that's not the word that I mean. But it was very, like, emotionless. Very blunt. And this, and this, and this. Like, I didn't feel the, like, development of feeling. Emotions. Connections with the characters. Um, I haven't put it through core pile yet. But that feels like a good idea. So let's do that. Okay so characters is number one. I liked them but I didn't feel any strong feelings for them. Gonna go with a 6.5. Atmosphere. I really like the atmosphere. The atmosphere I feel was good. We had our snowy kingdom of the ice mark. We had the land of ghosts. We had the werewolves in the forest. It was the vampires. Like, I felt the atmosphere. Um, I'm gonna give atmosphere an 8. Writing. As I say, I like the plot, I like the structure, it felt well paced. 
the writing could have helped us feel more for the characters, so not perfect, but I think I'm going to give it an 8 again. Plot. I, I really like the plot. I liked, as I say, like the plot was quite political for a middle grade. I'm going to give plot a 9. Intrigue. Um, I don't think intrigue was necessarily high. It was the pacing that made me keep going. I'm gonna give Intrigue an 8. Next up is Logic. Logic is definitely gonna get a lower rating. Um, this girl becomes queen very young with no sort of like, I don't know, royal terms, re regent? Like, no one warming the throne for her until she comes of age or anything. She's this warrior princess at 13. Some of the world is maybe a little bit less logical. I'm going to give it a six for logic. And then enjoyment, I'm going to go in the middle of all of that with another eight. Which brings out a four star, 7.64. Four stars for the Cry of the Ice Mark. I enjoyed. I'm really pleased with that experience. So... Hurrah! Um, and the next book I'm going to pick up, because, you know, we just go from one straight into the other, is the one you are sat on. So, let's get you out from under there. You're low again now, but City of Stardust. This came in Fairy Loot recently. Beautiful holographic foil cover. Gorgeous. I don't know if it's polar fantasy, but the cover is delivering polar fantasy. I've heard that it's very atmospheric, very slow, not much plot, plenty of vibes. There's potential for me to really enjoy this because strong atmosphere but slow going books do tend to do all right with me. I mean look at The Bear and the Nightingale for example. But yeah we'll see. I'm gonna crack on with this for a little bit. It is fairly late so I might go to bed soon but I would like to at least make a dent in this first. So let's do that. Thursday evening and I have a reading update for you. Who would have thunk it? I am this far into the city of Stardust. What am I about halfway ish? Yeah maybe just under halfway ish. I hope to finish this tomorrow um, but I am pleasantly surprised by this. I feel like I'm having a good time I'm liking it. It's very much full of vibes and the plot isn't necessarily going very far. Every character is keeping a secret so we don't really know anything. It's all very elusive. There's this melancholy mood throughout all of it that I'm really enjoying and I'm, I'm liking the atmosphere. In terms of the plot and what is going on, your guess is as good as mine unless you've finished it, in which case your guess might be slightly better than mine. But at this point, if you haven't read it, your guess is as good as mine, because I'm not too sure. Our main character is a young girl, young woman, uh, called Violet Everly. And the Everlies are cursed. One Everly every generation has to go to this woman who is this, like, immortal weirdo. <laughs> Um, she doesn't age, she doesn't get sick, she's always there to take the next Everly. And our main character's mother went missing ten years ago, and now both the daughter and the woman who claims an Everly every generation is searching for her. But there's a lot of secrets. There's kind of like this society of magical scholars that's all very secretive and the families are all very secretive but it seems like the families are also very much all against each other and I'm 
majorly not sure what's going on, but I'm having a good time and the intrigue is definitely very high for me. So far I can see how this book would very much be like a hit or miss sort of book. I can see why a lot of people might not vibe with this. It is slow, it's confusing, all vibe, very little plot development. I can see that, but I'm enjoying it. And I can definitely see the comparisons to the Starless Sea in this. I enjoyed the Starless Sea, I didn't love it, but I enjoyed it. But I can definitely see those sorts of vibes in this. But I'm having a good time and I am pleasantly surprised because a few people in the lead up to me picking this up did say like, oh I'm not sure how you're going to feel about this one. And then proceeded to tell me like, all oh, vibe, no plot, slow going. Blah, blah blah and I was like right so like and listed a load of my favorite books <laughs> so yeah I'm enjoying this I thought I would just give you a bit of a reading update um, before I head to bed I'm hoping to have a really heavy reading day tomorrow I should finish this tomorrow I'm finding the reading of it to be quite quick to be honest with you I might read a little bit more tonight although I am very tired so I also might not um, but yeah there's your Thursday update. I have a half day at work tomorrow, so the reading should be strong in the afternoon and evening. Bed for now though. Hello, this will do. I've been trying to balance you for ages. Uh, where is my core pile? Right, it is Friday. I am on sprints. I had a half day at work today. Um, so I started sprints early. I've been sprinting for a decent portion of the day. It is like six o'clock and I have finished The City of Stardust by Georgia Summers. Um, this is not polar fantasy and you know what sometimes you just don't know until you've read it and the cover made me think it was. It's not, it's not a polar fantasy at all. Um, but I very much enjoyed it. I can definitely see how this will be a hit and miss book for a lot of people. Um, or hit or miss even for a lot of people for me it landed quite well but I've already seen a lot of people that have picked this up for Bolathon thinking you know cover um and then not loving it so much and I, I get that it is very much vibey with a very confusing plot the timeline jumps around quite a bit the characters can be confusing the atmosphere I think is very strong but I can see how people might not get on with the characters and might not necessarily care or get confused and just not flow with it. I really liked it. I think the intrigue was like it hooked me. It really hooked me. I had no idea what was going on for most of this but not in a way that made me think oh this is a waste of my time I don't get it in a way that made me think I need to understand what's happening here so I need to keep reading. I need to know what is going on. How did we get in this situation? What happened? So it worked quite well for me I think. Um, definitely some highs and some lows. I have run it through core pile and I haven't got my glasses on and my, my computer's up there. Um, it got a 7.14 overall on Core Pile, so it did come out at a 4 star for me. Very vibey. It definitely leans very heavily on the secretive mystery of the world that Penelope comes from, how the Everlees are tied into that in a different sort of way. Um, there's a lot of intrigue, a lot of secrets kept from you as a reader throughout this, so I can see why people might get a bit fed up with that. But for me, it worked very well. I was intrigued, it kept me going, and I really liked the atmosphere of it. It felt like it had this melancholy air to it throughout most of the book, and there was this, like, ever so slight dark whimsy at every turn and there's this sacrificial air about everything that they do. The best comparison I think for it is like the Starless Sea, 10,000 Doors of January, that sort of vein. Um, however I have seen people compare it to Addie LaRue. I don't get that one personally. But yeah, four stars overall 
for the City of Stardust. Not a polar fantasy at all. Not even like Russian inspired like I thought it was going to be. The fact that the um, author bio at the back says that she's spent most of her life living across the world, including Russia, um, made me think that it would have more of a like Russian inspiration perhaps. But no, I did, I did have a good time with it though. So four stars for that one. And another book down. Next up, I am picking up the Winter Garden by Alexandra Bell. This one's been on my shelf for a while, like since it came out, um, and I've never been too sure if I want to pick it up or not. I feel like now is a good time to do it though. I feel like I may get some sort of similar vibe. I'm not necessarily expecting this to be a polar fantasy, but I do think there's some sort of like icy magic in here somehow. I think the garden is somewhat a magical thing um made with like snow and ice and so on i don't know i feel like this could be akin to the night circus which i really liked but we'll see how it goes i have started it i've read the prologue which is 25 pages for a prologue and what i've learned from that is our main character Beatrice when she was very young her mother passed away and the night her mother passed away is the first night she found the garden or more accurately the garden found her. We'll see where this goes. I feel like this is about her trying to find the garden again maybe I don't know we'll see but yeah 25 pages in so far I'm gonna give this one a go see where we get to. Hello from a slightly different location. Um, it is the last day of Polathon. <laughs> I don't know what happened to this week. I don't know where it went. I don't know how we got here, but we're here and it is the last day. Now, what did I tell you last? I think I told you that I was reading The Winter Garden, correct? I was reading The Winter Garden. I finished City of Stardust, picked up The Winter Garden. It was on my self-destruct list. As you can see, my bookmark's still in there, but I need to take that out because I'm DNFing this. I made the decision to DNF this yesterday after I got 160 pages into it. I have a very particular topic that I cannot read about. I have one specific trigger and that is domestic violence. I I can do torture, I can do wars, I can do other stuff, I can't think of a single thing right now but you know like I love the great coats, Traitor's Blade, Night Shadow, with all the gruesome horribleness that's in there but domestic violence I can't do. Violence of any other kind, absolutely fine. Of the domestic kind, I can't do it. So um, that is my one specific trigger. And I was wondering why there was a certain relationship in this book that made me feel uncomfortable, made my skin crawl, I wasn't enjoying. Um, and I mentioned it and I said, um, I was talking to Steph and I said like, I, like, I feel like I know where this is going and I think it's going in a way that I'm gonna need to put it down. So she looked it up for me. Um, and yeah, it does go in a domestic violence direction. So I'm really gutted to say that I need to DNF this um, purely for that reason. That's disappointing, I guess. Um, the writing I was enjoying, I like Alex Bell's writing, I can see how it's the same style as her Polar Bear Explorers series, although this is adult and that's middle grade, I can still see her style in it. Like the mystery of the garden was, you know, it was going in a good direction for me. Um, I liked the whimsy of it, I liked the mystery and that no one could quite believe it and it did feel very like Night Circus-esque. But yeah, knowing now what I know, I can see where the book will go and the direction it's going to take. Hello Finn, someone's got the zooms. Zoom! <laughs> Zoom! <laughs> Parkour! Jumpy jump! Oh, you coming back up? Oh, 
are you doing? Parkour! <laughs> I wish I was that excited after a poo. Uh, anyway, yeah, um, knowing what I now know about this, I can't read it and I'm sad to have to DNF it, but it is what it is, unfortunately. So, I mean, kind of book three for Polathon down. Hmm. Um, and then today, I so far have not read anything and it is alarmingly late in the day. But I'm gonna try and read Rise of the Dragon Moon by Gabrielle K. Byrne, I think that's how you pronounce that. Look at that cover. How polar fantasy does that look? The ice never forgives, the ice never forgets. You cannot bend its will, you will break trying. It's about a queendom that is um, at the mercy of the dragons that killed the king. There's a young dragon who may be the only key to the queen's release. Uh, Dragon Mountain, Long Held Secrets, Bear Cats, Dragons Stalk Them, Greatest Danger Might Be a Mystery Buried in the Past. Ooh. Yeah, it's a middle grade. It's icy. There's dragons. So I'm going to give this a go. Um, whether I finish it today, realistically, eh. Well, I did it. I finished my book. It is 20 past 10. And I have read this, this whole thing. I mean, it wasn't very big, so wasn't that much of a challenge, I guess. But also I didn't start reading today until like half five. Um, I enjoyed this. Uh, this is a middle grade. I probably already told you that. Um, about the princess of a queendom. Her father was killed by dragons. Her mother was taken by dragons and she needs to get her mother back and work out why the dragons are doing this to them but the cover kind of gives it away a little bit that a little dragon is with her for some purpose or another um i don't want to say too much for spoilers but it was a really good middle grade poe fantasy like i did enjoy this it was quick easy going just what i needed today i think I will say, like, not not mind-blowing, not one that's going to stick with me. Shall I put it through core pile? Because I haven't done that. I feel like it might get a three star, but, like, not, not in a bad way. How does that make any sense? Like, I feel like it's going to get a three star, but not in a bad way. It was good, but it was just good. It wasn't, like mind-blowing. For example, characters, like, I liked them, but they were nothing special. Maybe a seven. Atmosphere I liked, but it was because it was polar -y, but it also wasn't as strong as it could have been, so seven. Writing wasn't very complicated, wasn't difficult. I don't think it was particularly an original style, it was just easy going. Seven. Plot. Predictable, yeah. But there was a little twist at the end, but it didn't really have much of a repercussion. Six. Intrigue, probably also a six. Logic, yeah. Seven. And enjoyment, probably feels a lot like a seven. Oh, look at that. Three stars. <laughs> um, 6.71 on Core Pile, which comes out at a three star. Not bad though, like mostly sevens, like on the good side of average. I feel like I'm down talking it, like I had a good time, but it was just an easy, quick middle grade, but I liked it. Good one for Polarthon, for sure. And anyway, I'm not going to read anything else because it is now 20 past 10 on Sunday night, so there's no point me starting anything else. How much have I read this week? Why are we... So yawny. I have read this week 1,299 pages, which is pretty good going. So for every 100 pages, that's one snowball. So that's 12 snowballs, nearly 13. If I read one more page, it would have been 13. That's kind of annoying. But 12 snowballs for that. Rise of the Dragon Moon gets me another two, so that's 14. City of Stardust gets me another one, so that's 15. Cry of the Ice Mark gets me another two, so that's 
17. So I've got 17 snowballs. Sadly, I will miss out on my bonus snowballs for the winter garden, which would have got me another two, but I DNF'd it. But 17 snowballs for my Polathon week. Pretty, pretty good going. Um, which means I will be donating £17 to Polar Bears International at the Just Giving link, which is down below. Um, at the point of filming this ending clip here, I don't know who won. So I will add that tomorrow when I edit this, because um, other people are still finishing up and stuff, and I don't expect people to have submitted all their snowballs and stuff. But I will let you know who won. But that's that's my wrap up. 17 snowballs, 1,299 pages. I've had two four stars, one three star, and one DNF. But I've had a good week. It's been really nice to hang out on sprints and be so active and stuff. That's been really lovely. I've had a lovely week, but I am very much looking forward to going to bed. And I'm chuffed that I managed to finish an extra book. Um, I realise that this isn't as well as I would normally do for Polathon, but normally I take the whole week off work and daily vlog it and read a book a day. I was unable to do that this year, but it's still been a good time, still been successful, so hurrah. But yeah, that's it from me in Polathon. The next clip will be tomorrow me letting you know who won. You stuck around to the end and that means you are here to see one thing. You want to know who won. Well, I am very excited to be uh, currently working out who won. Um, and whilst doing the math to work out who's won, I've come across some very entertaining responses in the Arctic Fox team. So I don't know who it is that with every snowball submission has told me where they're aiming their snowballs. But they submitted five in the face, then submitted six aiming for the ears, and then one, and with my last, I shall do my best at taking out a kneecap. Which is brilliant. I'm very happy for them. So that was entertaining. Um, but... Arctic Fox did not win, so that that is sad for them. You know who else did not win? Polar Bears. My team. We did not win. We came last. Uh, Polar Bears came bottom. And that means that if Polar Bears didn't win and Arctic Foxes didn't win, Arctic Foxes came second. And that means that our winning team for the Great Snowball fight of 2024 is Team Reindeer. Well done Team Reindeer, you win. Um, and I don't want to like make them even more smug about this, but they won by a lot. So go Reindeers, you won. Next year, you're going down. Anyway, that is that. So, uh, reindeers absolutely annihilated us. You guys win the snowball fight. I hope you've all had a fantastic polathon. I hope you've all very much enjoyed the readathon. Again, the donation link is down below. So, if you do want to throw some last minute donations that way, the donation link does not actually close. So, if you need to wait to be able to donate or you just fancy doing it at any other time of year, that link is always open, but as always, only donate if you are able to. Um, but yeah, I hope you've enjoyed, I hope you've had a good time with this vlog, I hope you had a good time with the readathon, and I will see you in whatever comes next. Bye!